Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted. The, well, it's the French edition because you're still in France, but you're not at the cafe edition and you're probably not drinking a nice ale right now. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm Kevin Ashenden. It's the 31st of July and uh, I'm drinking kitchen tea. Gavin, how are you doing today? Kevin, I'm very well indeed. I've I've had some friends uh, who joined me for worship in our little chapel here, and one of them is a an, uh, an IT engineer, so he's helped me. So I can do this from home at the moment, um, <laughs> instead of having to go to the cafe. This means I have to buy in my beer. More importantly, it means my wife gets to monitor my buying in of the beer. So, <laughs> so it may just be a little bit less generous than it used to be, but that's fine. I'm I'm drinking kitchen tea, and I'm so much the better for it. Well, I was in Texas, so I got to have my Shiner beer uh, last week. But yeah, I, I'm I'm sober now, and I'm working on caffeine after a week of travel. Uh, it took me an extra 15 minutes to set the studio up today because I couldn't remember what plug does into what and how to turn the camera on we, when we first Skyped each other. Everything on your side was perfect, and uh, I couldn't, you know, it's just one of those days. It's a first. It's, it's, it, it was yeah. a first, Kevin. It was wonderful to feel competent at my end at last. <laughs> Well, I'm glad we're we're up and rolling. So let's talk a, a little bit about what's going on recently uh, in England and a letter we saw published in reaction to the letter. Um, let's. I wanted to go back in Christ, uh, Christian history. 500 years ago, there was a Reformation. Um, started. You would think it was started by Martin Luther. It was actually started by a reaction to Martin Luther. Martin Luther one day uh, wanted to talk about. Uh, a whole bunch of different topics and in the college he was going to what you would do is post a whole bunch of things you want to talk to and then a forum of people would get together like happens you know in today's universities and you sit and hash these out and um, so he put up 95 things he wanted to talk about well the reaction to the 95 things is kind of what started the reformation um, it didn't happen overnight but uh, over the the causation of a couple years uh, Rome got really perturbed that, uh, you know, these things were even in question. Um, there were some very questionable Roman uh, uh, Catholic bishops uh, in Germany at the time causing even more trouble. And all of a sudden we have a reformation. We have uh, a new spark in Christianity trying to bring the church back to its center. Now I say all this um, because you got together with some people and uh, ain't, I... <sighs> Do you have a title yet? Oh yes, we do. You mean do, do okay. we? Are we called something? You mean yes, we call the yes, movement yes. for the renewal of Anglican orthodoxy. Yeah, orthodox Anglicanism. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you put together a nice letter saying, you know, it, it's beyond our control. It's getting really mushy out there. There's no hope anymore in the Church of England, um, which is kind of what Martin Luther said about Rome, and you know. There was a newspaper article about your letter, and it got a little bit of traction, a little bit of traction. Now we're seeing the response to your letter is almost more uh, potent than the letter itself. Yes, Kevin, we've had an exciting few days, and mm -hmm. as always, the events tell us what's going on behind the scenes. So um, we were surprised when the London Times uh, refused our letter because they had promised they'd take it. So when they refused the last minute, we suspected somebody had lent on the letters editor. And um, and indeed, the very next day, the London Times ran uh, an article by the Bishop of Norwich. And the Bishop of Norwich said that he was equally outraged as these conservatives, because he knew there were a whole load of progressive liberals, and they also were going to leave the Church of England if their needs weren't met. <laughs> so they could threaten to leave quite as well. And clearly what had happened was Lambeth had gone to uh, the Times and one of their favorite bishops and said, um, we need a response to these people. I mean, it was a kind of ludicrous response, but nonetheless, uh, it, it was out there. And then a few people had got in touch with us saying we wanted to sign the letter to be original signatories. We had to do this fairly quickly uh, and, well, and not everyone was on the end of their email. 
Yeah, let's back up a little bit. Um, the letter you have has signatures from bishop and clergy, um, a, a couple lay people. Who gets to sign this letter now? Well, that's exactly the point. A number of people said, is there any way we can add our names to it? We really approve of this. We, we like the name, uh, the movement for the renewal of Orthodox Anglicanism. We like the contents of the letter. Uh, we like, if you like, the, the warning to the archbishops that uh, there are lots of people who want to hold them accountable for holding the faith. Can we sign? So we put an online version up. And then within 72 hours, we had 500 people. Then we had 1,000 people. Now we're heading for 1,500 people. Um, and the interesting thing was the response from the establishment. The Church Times, um, which has avoided writing about me now for several years, <laughs> almost as if they had a policy not to, uh, uh, not to mention my name, um, the kind of Christian equivalent of, of Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> the clergy who so, shall not be named, yes. The clergy who shall not be named, yes. So finally they had to write about it, and they, they did a podcast. And in the podcast they said, well, we don't expect anything to come from this because the laity won't support it. There'll be no traction to it. But at this stage they noticed there were 800 names. So they said, what if this did become a movement? What if it did find support in the UK and elsewhere. So now it's twice that now, nearly. And um, mm -hmm. perhaps you might even be able to put up a link uh, at the end of the program so uh, people can sign up. And if they say, well, is this for Anglicans in England? No, not at all. Uh, this is for Anglicans uh, to, to offer their weight. We can use the sophistications of databases to distinguish uh, from where people are from. Um, but we were surprised at the way in which the establishment were taken aback by this. Uh, and they're concerned that this just might be the beginning of a serious pushback, a movement, where people, Christians who believe in the scriptures and tradition, uh, express their discontent with the direction that progressive Christians are going. It's interesting because GAFCON itself is a response to the Brooklyn Anglican Communion and calling for, you know, a semi-reformation. We need to get back on track. Uh, they wrote the Jerusalem Declaration, which is really a Nicene Creed for the 21st century. You know, sure. you guys are, you know, you guys are using all the words, but you're 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 using them wrong. You, you, let's get on a common definition. And, you know, we, we've seen now, you know, the last 10 years, a desire, uh, both globally and now, at the in the Mother Church in England. Uh, to start doing things right. Uh, this uh, politically correct church is dying. Uh, it's got trouble because it's established with the uh, uh, England itself. Uh, what can be done within the structures, or are we just going to work outside now, Gavin? One of the challenges that we present here in England is also to GAFCON itself. GAFCON has to decide whether it's going to follow um, the American uh, ACNA uh, pattern of bringing in sacramentalists, evangelicals and charismatics, or whether it's going to go down, well, let, let's just pick a jurisdiction out of thin air, perhaps perhaps a Sydney model uh, in, in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, two ways of, of, of doing GAFCON. Um, in England, of course, we have a number of Anglican jurisdictions already. People don't know about them. Um, but there's the traditional Anglican Church, there's the Catholic Anglican Church, there's the Free Church of England. Um, and although these are quite small, nonetheless, they're Anglicans and they want to belong to a new Orthodox settlement. So one of the things we have to do as we prepare for Jerusalem 2018 is to decide whether we're going to go for a, a, a narrow uh, and I guess I'd say exclusive model of Anglicanism or the ACNA version, which seems to me at any rate to be a, a more enriched version and to want to bring in, if you like, the whole spectrum of what the Holy Spirit has given to the church. So that's that's the first decision we have to make. And we're, we're having meetings where we're preparing for that and mm -hmm. trying to decide what the right way forward for Jeruth Jerusalem 2018 is going to be. You know, the irony that if the ACNA uh, emerges from the next uh, GAFCON as the leader of the Anglican Communion it, it is beyond pale uh, as uh, the people who remained in tech and uh, the Anglican Church in Canada uh, always thought that, you know, the progressive way was the way forward. 
and the clergy and laity both revolted and said no the way you're going is the wrong way it's dividing the church as it did it's tearing at the fabric of the entire anglican communion which it did and you know the response was we can do better and you know we formed the anglican church of north america and um it's really uh matured itself well it's already in its second archbishop and there's no sign of discord within the house of bishops which is something i was told all along you're going to make it it's going to break and there will be no uh you know anglicanism in north america yeah that that didn't happen gavin i think one of the wonderful things about the holy spirit is the more of the holy spirit you have the less discord you have too Mm -hmm. uh, I've always had this view that as the church loses confidence in the Holy Spirit and loses confidence in the miraculous, so it becomes political. But Kevin, we're discovering things all the time. And I remember about, um, I don't know, five years ago or so, people talked about Internet church. And actually, there were some sort of cool people in the uh, Church of England head office who said we must, we must practice a little bit with Internet church. And everyone said, yes, but it's not the real thing. However, um, partly since in a more intense way in the last week, but certainly over the last um, uh, over the last six months, I, I've been really taken aback at the extent to which people have made contact on the Internet. I did a small video for Christian Concern on my reasons for leaving the Church of England. Um, somebody in the Church Times wrote that uh, the laity will never support this movement. It, it's just not going to happen. Uh, I noticed that this video had been seen 126,000 times, and I don't think it was all clergy. <laughs> and, um, one of the things I've been surprised at is I got an email the other day from a couple in Edinburgh, and they said, we don't go to church anymore because all the churches within travel distance from us are progressive. So my wife and I, we sit down and we, we use the prayer book, and we read from the Bible and we say our prayers together. And frankly, we feel a bit lonely. And then they said, we discovered your sermons. Uh, I'm sure there are lots of other people's sermons there, but they, they just happened to discover mine. And we discovered your, your, your live FaceTime morning prayers. And we're now consider ourselves part of your Internet church. <laughs> and I, if it wasn't for the loneliness that lay behind this, I would just be delighted. But of course, I'm, I, I'm also pained that there are people who are disenfranchised by the progressive churches move and who are looking for some kind of orthodox fellowship in the spirit uh, not too long ago i think eight maybe uh, maybe 10 years there was something called second life it's probably still out there today where people would log on virtually to a new world and set up their own characters mm -hmm. and stuff like that and part of that world they could go to church they could go to work they could do all these different <laughs> things and uh the church used to, to scoff at a virtual church you know, and, and I did too. But now with the, the live content you could put on Facebook and YouTube, um, you don't get the, the smells of the candles and, and the stained glass windows, but you can still have a, a virtual community. And I, I get to watch your uh, morning prayers on Facebook and uh, other things. Obviously, Anglican TV would not exist if it was not for uh, Internet uh, video in live video and it's it's a new dawn a new age where i think the church needs to take advantage and use this tool uh but not abuse it and uh, one of the things go on well, one of the things that this internet fellowship is doing uh is of course it's providing some kind of church for people who have none at all but it's also providing hope um, the numbers of people who are getting in touch with us and saying we want to be associated with this movement for the renewal of Orthodox Anglicanism because we had no other way of making our views felt. The church newspapers uh, are all bought into the progressive agenda. The church councils are as well. Um, and one of the sad things is the way in which I think the Orthodox groups have been split. Um, this is a historical problem. Over, over the years, there have been different versions of uh, renewal movements which have never got their act together and, and come together. So what I think we're seeing is a, a groundswell of lay support for people who want to give their weight to some kind of public affirmation that when it comes to marriage and gender 
and sexuality and Christian ethics. They want to live and believe uh, in the way in which the scriptures uh, invite them to. So this is really quite an exciting movement. And it plays exactly into what you were saying at the beginning, that um, to write a letter, to have 22 signatures, to put it uh, into the internet, it's not a big thing. But when you find the response is producing waves of support, both in England and across the world, that's becoming a bigger thing. I, I do want to cover uh, briefly one other topic. Um, I saw that uh, Bishop Lyons received a letter saying that he's no longer able to uh, celebrate. Um, yes. Can we just briefly talk about that one little topic uh, about what does it mean when Archbishop uh, Welby and I guess his bishop uh, uh, says he can't celebrate? What does that mean? Well, it's effectively a form of excommunication. Okay. Wow. <laughs> it's not saying he it's not saying he can't take communion, but it's excommunicating him as a priest and as a bishop. So if, mm -hmm. for example, uh, right up to he received that letter, Andy could apply to a, a bishop in the Church of England for permission to officiate. It's called PTO. It's like a driving license. And <laughs> we um, have a depot, but I got I got a PTO, <laughs> yep. Uh, and it's used for two purposes. It's used, first of all, to ensure that there is no uh, th there's no malfeasance in your background. We're all mm -hmm. required to have security checks. And that's quite right. Sure. But it's also being it's also being used as a as a dogmatic control. That if your face no longer fits, then sometimes on safeguarding issues they'll refuse to have you. So Andy has been told he may no longer go into a Church of England and act as a priest or a bishop. Now, if he does do that, um, clearly they can't sanction him. They don't pay him. He doesn't have a license from them. But of course, what they're threatening to do is to sanction the vicar or the priest or the curate who invites him. So nobody will invite him on that basis. There is, however, yeah, they, a way They around. have something pretty formal there. It's not just a slap on the wrist. They actually course, start investigations, yeah. right? Yeah, they do. It, it, it's the new inquisition. <laughs> it's called the clergy disciplinary measure. Uh, and, and you now have archdeacons who just send emails to clergy. I've had a lot of clergy write to me saying this, because I was in the General Synod when we, when we created this thing, and we were, there was a great deal of hesitation. Uh, and the church itself has recognized that it's been not handling it very well. But you have archdeacons now threatening clergy with the inquisition. Uh, if you don't get back into line, there'll be a CDM against you. And who knows what will happen? Uh, and there's a fear that instead of covering safeguarding issues, it's really being used just as the Inquisition was to pull people back into line and make them behave. However, you'll be pleased to know um, that if, for example, somebody wanted Andy Lyons to preach or to celebrate uh, and they went into the church hall or they, they, they borrowed the, the hall of the school next door, as soon as you're off premises, um, the Inquisition, the arm of the Inquisition doesn't reach you. And actually, I think one of the things that we're hoping will happen, there'll be, there'll be more Andy Lyons in the future. Uh, we're hoping for a, for a college of Anglican Orthodox bishops in time. Uh, and they probably won't be able to go into the buildings because the Inquisition will threaten to cut the buttons off the cassock of any clergyman who invites them. Uh, but they'll be certainly, if, if the parish feels strongly enough to invite them into the church hall, or to borrow the Methodist Church down the road. We're, we're back into a, a mixture of um, 16th century Spain and 18th century yes. England, where you know, Wesley right. and the Inquisition. So uh, we live in exciting times. <laughs> we do. Um, actually, uh, Bishop Lyons uh, has agreed to an interview with Anglican TV. He's on holiday now. When he gets back, we'll do a Skype interview and uh, ask him some of these hard pressing questions. Gavin, we've hit our time limit. I need to thank you for your time. And uh, uh, I'll provide in the show notes a link to people who, uh, for people who want to sign up for the uh, um, petition. Uh, they don't have to be clergy. They don't have to be bishops. It's wonderful if they are, but we, we, you would accept uh, lay people as well, right? We're just delighted. And what we'd also like them to do is if they have friends, uh, to let their friends know. The, the major platform for this has been Facebook. Uh, because we looked, it's come from Facebook, Twitter, a few websites, but Facebook has really been the major driver of this. So I think what we'd say to people is if, if you identify with this movement for Orthodox Anglicanism, just sign it, get your friends to sign it. We'd be delighted. One of the things that this will mean is we'll, we'll send people occasional pieces of information. We won't spam them, but, but there'll be occasional pieces of news when they're there. But we're hoping that what this will do is be a litmus test and show that 
Um, there are many Anglicans who want to protest about the way in which the progressive parts of Anglicanism uh, ha have moved and say, no, this, this is not in our name. I'm Kevin Carlson. I'm Gavin Ashenden. You've been listening to episode 311 of Anglican Unscripted. God bless you and thank you. <laughs>